So Arsenal top of the Premier League once again. I thought there were four performances in this game that were unbelievable. But in general, I think there's so many talking points and things to discuss in this video. And of course, we're going to be getting into your questions at the end. But before we get into it, if you do enjoy this daily Arsenal content, just do me the favour and give me a thumbs up on this video. So let's get into it. So what a win that was. And I think most importantly, that's what matters in this game. It was the three points. I think it was a good game without being glamorous. I mean, let me know your thoughts on it. There's been some complaints after the game that I'm seeing online and in the comment section of people maybe not thinking we went after Luton in a way that maybe we was capable of doing. And I understand. But, you, you know, you're not going to blow every single team out of the water every time you play them. And let's not forget, this was a team that was heavily rotated. And I think that brung some good things. You know, we saw some good performances, maybe a couple of performances that we can discuss. And I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on. But all in all, I think 2-0 against Luton with a heavily rotated squad is a good result. Now, I want to start on how I think the players performed. Because like I said, I thought there were four players who in my eyes were incredible. And I think one of them maybe went slightly under the radar. So we're going to start with who I first thought was brilliant from defence. I mean, Gabriel and Saliba, I'm not counting them in this four. Of course, they're brilliant. They were, oh, they're always brilliant. But I think four people from this game really stood out. And I want to start with Ben White because Ben White was incredible. Very, very good defensively. The way he was getting forward, the skills that he had on display last night. Well, unlike anything I've ever seen from Ben White, you know, for some reason in this game, he decided to be a bit more adventurous, maybe. There was times where he was playing in the number 10 position. And that one move in particular where he kind of sent the guy to the chip shop, spin the other way and sort of set someone in. So I just thought Ben White shone in this game in terms of uh, someone from our defence. Ben White, very, very good. Again, Martin Odegaard absolutely controlled the game. Everything Arsenal done in this game went through Martin Odegaard he was a guy playing with confidence a guy playing with flair there's not much better players to watch uh, than Martin Odegaard when he's in in one of their moods that he was in last night Martin Odegaard was incredible and then a player who I actually think had a surprisingly good game but I think it's gone under the radar because when I'm looking at most other media channels and people ranking these players they always had him lower than most other people and I think Leandro Trossard actually shone in this game let me know your thoughts if you saw it as well but I actually thought Trossard played very good the tight ability this guy has you know he never got caught in possession really he kept spinning his man he never lost the ball he was sort of pretending to go one way spinning off and then laying off the ball I just thought he had a really understated performance in a role that's usually isolated for Arsenal now Zinchenko in this game probably helped with our left winger. We've sent, we've mentioned it many times on this channel that when we play Kiwi or Tomiyasu in that left back position, maybe our left winger is slightly more isolated. And I think when Zinchenko does push up, push up into midfield, it usually affects our left wing position, and it usually ends up with it's usually Martinelli out there having a good game and just having more of the ball. And I think we saw that in this game. Was it the fact that Zinchenko was playing? I don't know. But I think Trossard or whoever was on our left wing was brought into this game a lot more. And I think he had a very good game. I think Trossard was brilliant. But the man of the match. And I'm so happy he got man of the match. Because when I was watching it, I was thinking, you know, am I the only one who's seeing this? Or are other people appreciating the performance of ML Smith Rowe? Because it wasn't only what he was doing going forward. But the desire he had to get back at time. I think there was one instance when it was, let me know, was it Andrew Townsend in our box? And Emil Smith-Rowe slid in, won the ball and then started the next Arsenal attack. And of course, it wasn't just that. It's when he won the ball back, played it to Odegaard, who laid it off to Havertz and, and created the first goal. Emil Smith-Rowe was involved in both both goals. You know, the way he blasted down the left wing, cut in and then sort of laid the laid the ball, ball across. I hope he got the assist for that. I'm not sure how that exactly works. But ML Smith-Rowe was brilliant in this game. And I think he's really staked the claim now. You know, we said in the pre-match video that ML Smith-Rowe de deserves to start this game because he's not going to have many more opportunities to show that he does have a future at Arsenal. So I'm so glad that not only he started this game, but he played to such a level that he won man of the match and, and other people are appreciating his performances. I really like ML Smith-Rowe. It's going to be hard for him to break into this team in terms of starting eleven. But I think as an option off the bench, ML Smith-Rowe is brilliant. I hope we hold on to him. You know, there's been a lot of talk about selling ML Smith-Rowe. Maybe I've been guilty of it in the past. Because it's, it's difficult to say we need to keep a player when we're not seeing him play. We're not actually seeing what he can offer. 
you know, and he's been given his third start of the season, I think it was, and he showed just why he was so brilliant a couple of seasons ago. Remember, he had that season where he scored like 10, 11 goals. He was fantastic. Since then, he's not really been given the opportunity to show what he can do. He's probably been unlucky with injuries and, you know, just, just struggling to get into this team ahead of players like Odegaard. Gabriel Martinelli, Saka, and now Havertz and Jesus. But he just showed that he does have qualities. You know, I think ML Smith-Rowe is a brilliant bench option. If you're struggling to break a team down, I think if you bring ML Smith-Rowe on, you know, he has that hunger, he has that desire, but not just that. In terms of technical ability, ML Smith-Rowe is probably right up there in the whole squad in terms of technical ability. The way he can control the ball, the way he's able to fend players off. I'm just so glad ML Smith-Rowe put in the type of performance that Arsenal fans and Mikel Arteta can appreciate and maybe just give the manager something to think about going forward. And in terms of where that leaves Arsenal, listen, it's just another box ticked. It was 10 games, now it's 9 games left. It's another win and Arsenal at the minute are on our best run of form for the whole season. Now we need to basically do what we've just done in terms of our record, winning and not losing. We need to double that now. So it's going to be difficult. We've got some tricky fixtures coming up. We've got Brighton this weekend. That's not going to be an easy game. Away from home at Brighton is very difficult. Now, I don't think this is the same Brighton team of, of last year. Obviously, we got, we're going to have a match report coming up, a match breakdown, a match preview of that Brighton game. So make sure you're subscribed for that. But after that, you know, Arsenal are going to be in the thick of it now. That's why we saw so many players rested in this game. You know, we got Brighton coming up. Then you got Bayern Munich at home. Then you've got Aston Villa and then you've got Bayern Munich away. So the next four games are going to be very, very difficult. And that's why I'm glad that we was able to rest five players in this game. You know, players were able to come in and show that they do have things to offer this squad. This is the most amount of players we've had available all season. Urian Timber as well is on the cusp of returning for Arsenal. And if we can keep all of these players fit, then we have a tremendous chance in going a long way in the Premier League and in the Champions League. It only takes a couple of injuries for that whole sort of picture to change. Obviously, I hope it doesn't happen, but we're looking in good shape at the minute. But let me know your thoughts on the game. What did you think? Who were your favourite performers? Like I said, I pinpointed those four because I think they had a fantastic game. And now if we're looking at the title race, Man City beat Aston Villa, which was a bit of a shame. Because that was one of the games that I marked down as, you know, being one of Man City's more difficult games. They haven't got too many more difficult games now. And that's the thing that Arsenal are going to struggle with. You know, Man City have got to play Tottenham. And then I think after that, they're, they're, they're probably games that you look at and you think Man City are going to win fairly comfortably, comfortably. And that just makes it more difficult for Arsenal because we know how many difficult games we've got coming up. Obviously, Liverpool are playing tonight. Hopefully they can slip up. Hopefully Sheffield United can do us a favour. Do I think that's going to happen? I don't know. I mean, I keep saying Liverpool, to me, on the eye test, don't seem as good as Arsenal and Man City. But that doesn't mean they're not going to keep grinding out the results. That's what they've been doing all season. But I'll be watching that game tonight and hopefully Liverpool slip up. So now into the questions part of the show. And I've picked out a few decent ones here. So the first one is from Gunner Talk TV. And it goes, squad definitely needs some rotation. Big players need rest. And I think we saw that yesterday. You know, five switches, five players come in. And I think those players now are rested for those games going forward. So that's definitely a bonus. And it just shows that Arsenal do have the squad to be able to, to rotate. Now, we're not going to be able to do that against every team. But I liked what I saw yesterday. The second one was from 73 Whites. And it was Saka needs a rest. A lot of big games coming. Use the squad. And I think we definitely saw that yesterday. Saka wasn't even in the squad. Now, I don't think it's an injury concern that we should be worried about. But, you know, it just shows that when we don't have Saka, we, we are still able to win games. Now, of course, I'd prefer to see Saka on the team sheet and Saka on the pitch. But, you know, it just it's good that Saka got that rest going into this game against Brighton. Hopefully, he will be in the squad for that. I don't know if you necessarily start him. Maybe that was Mikel Arteta's thinking, you know, I'll give you this game off and then I'll bring you back in for the Brighton squad. But I'll be, I'll be looking out for, for Saka in that next game for sure. And the final question was from Frank Adonis. And it goes, we're going to win every game in the league. And listen, if that happens, Arsenal will win the Premier League. But like I said, it's going to be difficult. We've got some difficult fixtures coming up. 
I wish I could share your optimism in thinking Arsenal are going to win every single game. I do think there may be a draw in there, maybe two draws in there. Is that going to be enough to win the league? I don't know. We're just going to have to see how the fixtures affect these other teams. But that is it for today's show. Thanks so much to everyone for watching and listening. Let me know your thoughts on everything you've heard in this video. Let me know your thoughts on the game. And like I said, before you leave, just do me the favour of giving me a thumbs up on this video. So just like and subscribe and I'll speak to you all in tomorrow's video. Gooners, have a good day.